This episode of the Finnovate podcast is brought to you by Clickatel, the worldwide leader in mobile messaging services. Chat is on the rise as everything goes more mobile and more remote in the COVID world, and this now includes commerce. Chat commerce is changing the way we bank, shop, pay bills, and buy things by enabling consumers to interact and transact via their favorite chat apps. Worldwide mobile messaging leader Clickatel serves more than 15,000 global brands across retail finance and is poised to lead this chat commerce revolution as it moves from emerging markets into the mainstream of the U.S. Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Finnovate podcast. Joining me today, we have Peter DeVillers, the co-founder and CEO of Clickatel, and we'll be talking about the chat-based commerce and its impact on the financial industry. Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Greg. Thank you for the opportunity. So to get things started, let's just kick it off with a really simple question. Can you tell us a little bit about Clickatel and what you guys are working on? Greg, Clickatel is a technology company backed by Sequoia Capital, and we're the leader in chat commerce enablement. And what that means really is that we allow large bank and consumer brands to connect, interact, and transact with their customers where they are. And so what we find that today the data shows us that you and I, as consumers, spend 90% of our time on approximately five mobile apps. And our favorite app of those five is a chat app like WhatsApp or Apple Business. Uh, chat. And essentially, brands want to be where you and I spend our time and we enable that for them. Excellent. So let's take a big step back and talk about this from a very macro level. You know, What does the current global chat commerce landscape look like? I mean, you mentioned a couple of key stats there, but I, I suspect there's more to the story. Yeah. you know, Essentially, um, if you look at the technology adoption and how we have progressed through digital transformation as um, as banking industry or, or other verticals, um, we can start go back way to um, the early 2000s with the emergence of the internet economy. Uh, and ergo, we had, you know, uh, internet banking um, and we all slammed towards an interbanking landscape. After the internet economy, we had this phenomenon of the app economy and every major bank launched their own mobile banking app. Um, largely driven by smartphone penetration, the establishment of app stores, and essentially, you and I as consumers were requested to you know, change our behavior from an internet banking experience to a mobile app experience. Um, about two years ago, uh, the largest chat applications in the world um, eclipsed the largest social media platforms by a number of active users. And that kind of thrusted us into this uh, chat economy. And we as a company are leading the enablement for banks and large consumer brands to respond to that influx um, of, of consumer behavior change and really enable chat banking and ultimately chat comps. Sure. No, it's, it's been an explosion, quite frankly, over the last couple of years. And I think, you know, looking at how the adoption of chat apps and uh, chat based commerce has started to really take hold. You know, the, the next question, I suppose, the obvious one out there is, you know, how do you see this channel pushing the dial forward here in the global market? You know, what, what's what's coming next? Yeah, you know, in many ways, chat commerce is already well established in some emerging markets. You know, if you think about WeChat, Alipay in China, uh, it's the fastest growing commerce environment in the world. Um, and it's eclipsing anything that's happening in the West. We see the emergence of players like Paytm in India, in Pesa in Kenya. And it's very clear that consumers really like this idea of being able to transact within those same platforms where they connect and interact with friends and family. And to some extent, you have that with Venmo and, and, and some of the U.S. behavior, but it's really it's, it's early days for the U.S. market, and we expect a massive adoption, largely because the use case and the experience is just so much better. I'll, I'll use myself as an example very briefly. Uh, once a month, I get an email from AT&T 
uh, giving me a button to click to view my bill. I click on the button, it takes me to a website, so that's out of email into a website. I have to log in if I remember my details. Three steps later, I can find the bill. And then ultimately, 3D secure, I can pay for the bill. But essentially, nine steps later, I've done something quite simple in paying my bill. And if I had a query in that bill, I had to then uh, suffer the, the pain of a call center experience to then query the bill. With chat commerce, we can do all of those things in three simple steps. Um, and if you have a query in your bill, you can actually then chat to a bot or an agent in real time. So the experience is massively uh, shrinked in terms of, of number of complex steps and uh, very much in, in, in line with our expectations um, as real-time digital experiences. I think a really interesting thing, you know, if you went to most people on the street and said, I can give you a in, uh, an on-the-phone hold experience with a big company like AT&T, or I can take you to the dentist for a root canal, I think it would be a toss-up in the minds of most people. I think it really is that much of an unpleasant experience when you come through on that type of, you know, impersonal customer call center type of thing. You know, now, to be fair, there are organizations that do this well and that, that um, put the time and effort in to really provide a good experience there. But I think that is not in general what customers experience as you kind of allude to. So, you know, as we look at the, the kind of chat experience, what kind of data do we have that, that talks about how customers view chat commerce, view this kind of interaction over chat as opposed to the uh, more um, potentially painful one of being on hold on the phone? Yeah, it's fascinating. You know, we know that 79% of consumers prefer chat over other channels. That's from e-consultancy. And, you know, I'm not sure, Greg, to what extent you've experienced that the number of deployments are, are growing rapidly, but still relatively slow um, in terms of mass consumer adoption. But once you've experienced a chat platform, for example, uh, we launched the first chat banking experience for APSA Bank. Um, about 18 months ago on the WhatsApp channel. And there you could basically pay, um, you know, a family member $100 or $50 with a single instruction um, and then we'll give you a confirmation to authorize. And so we see that there's about a 20% increase in customer sat um, and subsequent reduced churn uh, in that particular example. We also see that chatbot conversion um, it's about three times higher, three zero times higher than you would have with web marketing and email marketing efforts because the chats in general and the messaging that you receive, um, the open rates and response rates are so much higher. So we are very excited about what's happening with the relationship between a consumer and the brand. Um, and last thing I'll just say, simply not having to spell your last name. Now, you don't have a problem, but I do. Um, <laughs> It's a big thing, right? So, you know, not being placed on hold is possible by simple deployment of chat and, and, and simple AI. Yeah, no, certainly the, the having to spell your last name. I mean, we all know people, if it's not a problem that we have ourselves, we all know people who would uh, struggle with that. You know, go to Starbucks and they can't say your name right when you come up with something completely different on the cup that they give you at the end of the day. Um, now, you touched on something here that I want to explore a little bit more. We've been talking mostly about the benefits from the consumer standpoint, but let's talk a little bit about what banking organizations are seeing and what kind of benefits they're finding as they adopt chat commerce. You know, you mentioned Absa Bank a little bit. Are there other types of uh, benefits that you can point to? Yeah, absolutely. You know, what we find is that a, a large portion of the call center queries in a bank are really self-serve queries, um, but consumers still tend to call in because the information isn't readily available. And so um, we see that the labor cost of serving a client through chat uh, versus call center, for example, can be at a minimum 50% lower up to 3x to 4x lower, depending on the type of query. Um, we see that the efficiency for resolution um, is about 2x to 3x in the sense that, you know, time to resolution. Again, if, for example, if I call a call center, I'm dependent on how many agents I have available at that time. With chat, it's asynchronous. And so, any, any one of 1,000 calls can be handled through bots, 
um, in a self-serve environment. And if the bot can't answer or help you, you can break out in real time to a live agent. But that agent are able to handle three to four chats versus one phone call because it's asynchronous. So real efficiencies, real benefits, and maybe one more on the revenue side, we even see that uh, a large consumer brands in the prepaid and telecom space recording 21% higher average revenue per user because of the convenience factor and consumers um, can actually engage on those chat channels at will. Excellent. No, really interesting pieces to unpack there, and uh, certainly a lot more to, uh, to that you that you could get through, I'm sure. But let's let's come to now the more logistical side of this. You know, how is this done? How can you uh, actually implement something like this? Can you walk us through that process a little bit? Now, Greg, we thought long and hard about this. You know, we've been serving some of the world's largest banks and brands for uh, more than 20 years now. And we've realized that our own growth and scale is limited to our ability to deploy these services at scale. And so we've built tooling the last two and a half years that allows us to orchestrate the existing digital journeys that a bank have made investments into uh, onto the chat platforms. For example, if you're a regional bank or you're a large sort of you know, consumer brand, um, main street bank, we can take your website or your mobile app investment and journeys and map them through uh, different nodes and orchestration points onto the chat channels of that particular market that are relevant. Um, and we can actually do that in five business days. Now, that's really a vanity um, data point because most of these banking deals and transactions take months and, and to complete because of you know, contracting and everything else. But bottom line is, for a bank, it is a relatively painless, low-code, some cases zero-code uh, deployment with limited impact on their infrastructure and already stretched engineering teams. Excellent. No, I think that's a really interesting way. And, and of course, you know, the transaction process can be a lot longer, but cool that you are able to move that quickly. If you ever have the opportunity to do it, I would guess that that's probably more on the side of your potential partners than anything else. Um, we are just about out of time, but I want to quickly just touch on one final question. You know, the, obviously privacy is a concern. Uh, when it comes to this type of thing. Can you just talk really briefly about how you suggest companies use this type of platform safely in a way that respects their customers' privacy? Yeah, we care deeply about privacy and, and we've been operating in, uh, in financial services for many years to really understand that. In fact, our platforms have been used by the largest brands in the world to um, authorize and, and, and uh, secure their own platform. So like one-time pins, we delivered the first one-time pin, uh, second factor authentication services in the world, for example. Um, but these chat platforms are largely um, encrypted end-to-end. And so you and I as consumers, we've already trusted these platforms with personal messages and photos and, and content that um, we hold near and dear in terms of privacy. And so when it comes to brands, we give them best practices, but we also give them real um, comfort around the end-to-end -end encryption and where the data sits and that there's no packet inspection midstream. These services are as secure as any mobile app or properly built mobile app and secured um, environment and a lot more secure than a typical call center environment where you have human in the loop and very difficult to interrogate some of those interactions. Sure. No, that makes sense. Well, this has been just kind of a, a taste, a high-level overview of chat-based commerce and what Clickatel is working on. Peter, thank you so much for taking your time to walk us through everything. Really appreciate it. Greg, thank you. And I and, uh, really, really enjoy your content and information. It would, would be good to have advocates as well. Excellent. Well, if you're interested in learning more, we'll have some information available in the description of this episode. Um, but again, this has been Peter DeVillers, co-founder and CEO of Clickatel. And that is us for today, signing off from the Finnovate podcast. Thank you so much. The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved.
The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at Finnovate.com for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening.